Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Once again, I praise God for this wonderful privilege God has given for you and for me in the presence of God. Praise God. I, Aaron Deva Priyam, servant of God, coming to you all in the mighty presence of God. Shall we all bow down our heads and allow the presence of the power of the Holy Spirit so that the word of God is sharper than the double-edged sword. So it can do anything, anytime, right now in your life, in Jesus' mighty name. Shall we all bow down our heads and close our eyes. Gracious Heavenly Father, Almighty God, God of heavens and Lord of lords, King of kings, most high God, we thank you and praise you, praise you, praise you, praise you, Father. Wonderful God, great God, living God, thank you, Holy God, God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, we thank you and praise you, Father. You are our restoration. You are our revelation. You are our resurrection. You are our master God, great, powerful God, and the living God. We thank you and praise you. Awesome God. We thank you, Father God. You are the father of master God, master of all the nations, father of Father God, every humankind. You are the father. That means you are the creator of each one of us, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy God. Lead us and guide us, Master God. Master God, we rebuke the every distractions in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Once again, Father God, lead us and guide us, Master God. As you, Master God, taken off the crown, Father God, the crown of thorns, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy God. And Master God, why? And Master God, and what is the Father God, the actual Master God, the result of it, Master God? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lead us and guide us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen. And the God's people said, Amen and amen. Praise God. Dear friends, in the time of duration of this crucifixion period, we are, we are thinking about the presence of God in the crucifixion time. And God spoke to me a wonderful word thinking about the crown of thorns. Crown of thorns. Crown of thorns they have put on head of Jesus Christ when he was carrying the cross. Why? And why did they do that? And what is the actual meaning of that? And why God allowed it, in fact. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy God. First of all, when you think about the thorns, thorns means everybody knows. Thorns are pricking. Thorns makes us to get bleed. Thorns will give the pain. Thorns will give the a, a, a unexplainable internal and external pain as well. Thorns is denoting Actual in the spiritual point of view, biblical meaning of thorn is thorns or sin. Thorns are sin, hardship. They are very hard. Adverse meaning, persecution, pricking, pain. Nobody likes it. Thorns. Thorns makes, they give the, some uh, unexplainable pain inside and outside. Let us turn our Bible, Matthew, Mark chapter 15, verse 16 to 18. Mark chapter 15, chapter 15, verse 16 to 18. Let us see that. At the time of crucifixion of Lord Jesus Christ, there was a thought for, especially for, these Roman soldiers, they all have the peculiar, uh, they have the uh, understanding about Jewish people. At that time, when Jesus, uh, the accusation the, uh, has been put upon Jesus and it has been declared Jesus to be crucified. And there we see that they have made a, a big mocking Jesus Christ. Because Jewish people are telling and they accused Jesus saying that he is saying that I am the 
Kingo Jews. Yes, of course, it's right. It's not only King of Jews. He is the King of Kings. King of all humankind. King of the universe. Somebody say Amen. Praise the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ is the King of the universe, my dear friend. Now, of course, these people are mocking. And who are these? Always we think it's all we all. We all mocked in, in, a, in a different manner towards Christ Jesus, my dear friend. So here if you see uh, Mark chapter 15 verse 16 to 18. And the soldiers led him away into the hall called Praetorium. And that is a place where all the things there, they'll make all the mocking things and they make all beatings and all the things. It's a praetorium. And they call together the whole band. See, they want to make a, a party like, come, 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 let us all celebrate. Let's all celebrate. So they called every one of them. Call, come. And there they said, and they clothed him with purple and plaited a crown of thorns and put it upon his head. Of course, crown always to head. But what type of crown? He is the king of kings, the great living God, mighty God in the form of humankind just for you and me, my dear friend. And he has got the thorns, the crown of Thorns, the crown of thorns put upon his head, verse 18, and began to salute him, hail him, king of the Jews, what they are calling, king of the Jews, so saluting, our Lord Jesus Christ, he has just had a, a crown of thorns, my dear friend, and you know, there are a lot of explanation about it, in the passion of Christ, if you see, and they pressed it, their idea is, you are, you are a king and we are putting a crown for you. You people are calling you as a king of the Jews and let us have this as a crown and having a thorns. Now why these thorns are my dear friend? That's what we need to think about it. John chapter 19 verse 2 also explains the same thing. And the soldiers plotted a crown of thorns and put it upon his head and they put on him a purple robe saying that a, a purple color robe is the king the king uh, uh, sign of it a, a grand royal color and they put upon him and they are just showing that king so if you think uh, whether they have the idea or not the Jewish uh, I mean uh, the Roman uh, uh, soldiers they recognized him as a king, but in mocking way. Yes, these are, these are the things that are happening. Today we also accept Jesus is the son of God. Today we also accept Jesus is the living God. Jesus is the king of kings, is the king of universe, king of the creation. But we are taking it in a other side like a mocking. Not serious about it. Of course, we may not do such things, if at all, if you agree it or not. But we are in the side of mocking. Not realizing of he is the king. But we are keeping our God the same crown. And that means we are accepting him as a king. But we have, keeping inside, we are keeping thorns. So you are celebrating today, maybe Lord Jesus Christ as the king of the universe, keeping the thorns. Dear friend, we have to think about it. Have you got thorns in your crown? Have you got thorns in your worshipping God? Have you got thorns in your prayerful life? Have you got thorns in your family life? Have you got thorns in your uh, having a loving neighbor? Loving your brother, loving your everything. Have you got thorns? Have you got thorn in your family? 
have you got thorn in your crown which you are putting for Jesus today? First of all, if you see this crown of thorns is the emblem of Christian passion. The Roman soldiers, they mocked him and saying that king of the Jews. And today we are worshipping God. He is my king. Somebody say amen. We are worshipping God. He is my king. But are we keeping the same crown with thorns? The thorns which they kept for Jesus Christ. I believe it's something called as a, a, a botanical name for that. Is a euphorbia mili. Euphorbia mili or sperch mili. This is the uh, uh, a particular uh, family of the thing which has got a, a very three uh, uh, around three centimeter length of uh, thorn and it is very hard and that's what it that stem is can we can bend it round like uh, for the thorn and then we are seeing that uh, it is a very flexible stem and that's where uh, they they collected that thorn. And they put upon Jesus Christ, my dear friend. So it has got a, a three centimeter length of the thorn, which is very strong. If you see in the picture, it is very, very well we can understand. And that is uh, where when you press it, it is not like an ordinary thorn. It can bend and break it. It is very hard. It will not break. Rather, it will go inside deep. And it will be almost like a nail, strong it can go and fix inside. Maybe you need to pull it out to bring it out. And that's called, it's called euphorbia meli, this, uh, this thorn. So why this Roman soldiers got this idea first of all? Roman soldiers, no one told them you have to put the crown for him. Jewish people didn't tell them. Pontius Pilate, he didn't say anything. And Roman, uh, any soldier leaders, and no one said that. Then why did they got this idea? Dear friends, because the Jewish people said they accused Jesus as that he is the king of the Jews. He is claiming to be the king for us. So Jewish people had a, a limited mind. They had that only he is the king, only he is for them. They never recognized him, of course, till today, that he is the Messiah, the Savior, the Savior of the whole human kind. Somebody say Amen. So, have they got it or any biblical point? Is just because of soldiers did this crown? No, my dear friend, it is not just Roman soldiers. Somebody say Amen. It is beyond, 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 up to the Abraham. Then it's beyond Adam and Eve. It's beyond right from the beginning of Garden of Eden. Somebody say, Amen. Right from the beginning of Garden of Eden, the thorns. Remember, why did Jesus has been put? It is not the thought of Roman soldiers. It is just because of you and me. It should happen. And that's what it happened. And that's what Jesus Christ of Nazareth accepted that thorns, my dear friends. Thorns, if you look at the Old Testament, there are so many references. First of all, Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, if you see, we see there, first of all, the gospel began right from the beginning, the gospel. It's not the gospel only from the, we are seeing the gospels of Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. But we see that right from the beginning. Verse 15, 3. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. And between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. God 
Lord Heavenly Father is talking with the serpent, the devil, Satan, who cheated Adam and Eve. So he is telling there itself that uh, there will be a enmity between you and the seed of woman. So seed of woman is, praise God, Lord Jesus Christ. So the enmity, that means uh, the enmity between the Satan and Jesus Christ. It happened right from the beginning in the Garden of Eden itself. Somebody say Amen. And that's what the living God is talking about. Genesis chapter 3 verse 17 to 18 if you go through that. We see that and unto Adam he said because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of the wife and hast eaten the tree of which I commanded thee saying thou shalt not eat of it. Curse is the ground. Again I am reading it. Curse is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Verse 18. Genesis 3 verse 18. Listen carefully. Thorns. Thorns. The word started here itself. Thorns also and thistles. Shall it bring forth to thee. And thou shall eat the herb of the field. Dear friends. Thorns. God said already. Will fall upon the. The seed of the Adam and Eve. So thorns. Represents the curse. The sin. The hardship. Persecution. Pain. Thorns. I have been told in Genesis chapter 3 verse 18. Right from the mouth of God himself. Somebody say Amen. Thank you Holy Spirit. Thank you Holy God. Thorns and thistles. So these thorns will be putting upon you. And in all the field they will bring forth. Nothing but all sort of the fruits of thorns. So thorn in the thorns are in the curse. So thorns carries curse and curse has thorns. Numbers chapter 33 verse 55 it says, but if you will not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall come to pass that those which you let remain of them shall be pricks in your eyes. Here God is telling, he explains the Lord God. He said to Moses, speak to the children of Israel. And they say unto them, when you have passed over the Jordan into the land of Canaan, and there you have to do something. If we do not remove the one enemies inside of you, they may become thorns inside our eyes. So inside of your eyes, God is telling to Moses to direct these people when you reach Canaan after crossing river Jordan. So be careful. There will be some people who will be mixing with you. You have to separate them. Don't mingle them. You have to separate your thoughts. You have to separate certain situations. You have to separate from some sort of uh, habits. You have to separate from some sort of idea. Some sort of your, uh, your own ideas. Otherwise they will become thorns into your eyes. So thorns are a dangerous for the eyes. Because eyesight will lose because of thorns. Jeremiah chapter 12 verse 13. They have sworn wheat but shall reap thorns. God is telling to Jeremiah. When Jeremiah asked about the people, then God is telling to the Jeremiah. They will reap, they will sow the wheat. So you are sowing the wheat maybe, but thorns are coming up. 
Maybe you have the desire. You are thinking that you have it. And you are maybe planting it. But be careful my dear friend. If you have thorns in your crown for Jesus. And those thorns will make nothing. But what you saw the wheat. You will reap the thorns. That's what the word of God is talking about. So God answers to Jeremiah. Regarding people of troublemakers. They sown wheat but reap thorns. Thorns are cursed. Hosea chapter 9 verse 6. We see that they are gone because of destruction. Egypt shall gather them up. Memphis shall bury them. And pleasant places for their silver. Nettles shall possess them. Thorns shall be in their tabernacle. Thorns shall be in their houses. That's what God of God is talking. So thorns in the house of people who got corrupted against to God. So whoever gets corrupted in the presence of God, I'm sorry, the word of God is telling that they are the thorns in their houses. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 9, it says, Thorns and snares are in the way of powers. Thorns and snares are in the way of the crook-minded people. Thorns will be there always. Snares, nets. So, Proverbs chapter 22, uh, chapter 15, verse 9. Proverbs 15, 9. The way of the slothful man is as an hedge of thorns. So, these people, they have only hedge of thorns. But the way of the righteous is made plain. So these people way will be a thorns for the people of slothful. And that's what we see thorns in the Old Testament my dear friend. So ultimately the thorns is nothing but we are coming the curse against to God. And thorns are right from the curse from God. When we have done the sin against to God. So he said that thorns will be in your field. Adam and Eve. And that's what thorns are there now. Thorns are there. And that's what. When you come to the thorns in New Testament. Matthew chapter 13 verse 7. It says. And he spoke many things unto them. In a parable saying. Behold. A sawyer went forth to saw. Here Jesus is talked about the a wonderful parable about the seed. It is being put. And those seed in verse 22 he says. He also received seed among the thorns. Is that here at the word. And care of this world. And deceitfulness of riches. Choked the word. And he become the unfruitful. So the seed fell. In the ground of thorns. So if we have these thorns inside our heart. Inside our house. Inside our family. Inside of our lives. Though we receive the word of God. We can hear. But we will not listen to that. Rather we will be attracted towards to the, the wealth of this world. Oh this much money. Oh, this much property. Oh, this much is there. So this is what the life. But the word of God will be choked in their heart. It will be out. And deceitfulness of riches. And finally, they becometh unfruitful. And you know very well, Jesus said, The tree which is not bearing the fruit will cut out from the roots. Praise God. Man with thorns, man with thorns receives, hears the word of God, but taking care of this world, of the riches and all things, and chop the word and become unfruitfulness. Hebrew chapter 6 verse 7 and 8. Let us see that. For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh off upon it, 
and bringeth forth the herbs meat for them by whom it is dressed receiveth blessings from God or said but what but that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected so whoever bears the thorns will be rejected and is high unto cursing whose end is to be become to be burned that's what the word of God is talking my dear friend so it is good soil gets thorns if the good soil gets thorns it will be rejected and cursed and burned as well and that's what the thorn with the feet Luke chapter 6 verse 44 we are looking thorns in the New Testament verse 44 44 for every tree is known by his own fruit Today, word of God is telling every tree is known by his fruit. And that fruit, for the thorns, men do not gather figs. So figs will not come from the thorns. So once you see the fig, you know what is that fruit, whether thorn is there or not. Am I correct? That's what the Lord Jesus Christ himself speaking about this. Nor brambles bush. Gather the grapes. Grapes will not come for those bush. Like a, uh, the berries. A tree is known its fruit. So figs not coming from the thorns. At the same time grapes. They are from brameless bush. They are not from the bushes. So here thorns, briars. Thorns and briars, briars means pricky shrubs, thistles, their leaf with thorn. It's a leaf, but the edge of it, it has got a thorn. That's called thistles, brambles, pricky shrubs. For example, like a black, blackberry and uh, raspberries. These are not. So grapes are not like that. So once you see the grape, you know whether they have thorns or not. Once you see the figs, you know. So it is nothing but for every tree is known by his own fruit. So what is the fruit we are bearing it? So God knows by seeing the fruit whether you have thorns or not. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 7. Paul has a thorn. And that thorn was for the good reason God kept that's why God said, my grace is sufficient for thee. Somebody say amen. That is, at least I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. There was given to me a thorn in flesh, the messenger of Satan. He calls it as a thorn is the messenger of the devil, messenger of the Satan to buffet me, to choke me. Let not I should be exalted above the measurement. So God kept a, a controlling power because God what he has given to Paul that ministry is an extraordinary ministry. No one had in the world that that type of extraordinary ministry like Paul my dear friend. Be, be, be remembered. Lord Jesus Christ, after his 12 disciples, the 13th disciple, the great disciple, the man for sufferings, the gospel through the sufferings and persecution is Paul, the apostle. Somebody say a man. He is not an ordinary person, absolutely. He is a, 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 a peculiar, extraordinary person. Who just said that if I am not preaching the gospel, woe to me. Somebody say, yeah, man, praise God. And that's why he said that thorn, a messenger of the Satan. Dear friends, Isaiah chapter 1 verse 5, it said that why should you be stricken anymore? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick. So this is what uh, 
the prophesyingly this was coming that uh, the thorns bring the curse and curse will fall upon the head that is the meaning head is showing thorns to the head that's what the holy spirit is telling for you and me now my dear friend he is talking very clearly and telling that and this is what uh, we we are seeing so why this crown of thorns upon jesus we see very well because genesis 3 17 to 18 we saw the sin has come and god said thorns will be upon you and that is the curse so jesus took the crown of thorns a curse from adam and eve a curse from the curse supposed to be the curse upon us so he took upon him uh, john chapter 19 verse 2 if you see and the soldiers planted a crown upon the thorns and put it on his head and they put on put him on the purple robe first peter 2:24 who is own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by holes by his stripes we are healed praise god so jesus took our heavy burden of curse upon his head as thorns and made as the crown of thorns upon him and made us to become a righteousness somebody say a man and that is the reason jesus called it as matthew chapter 11 verse 28 come to me all you heavy laden all the labor i will give you the rest because i have taken your thorns i have taken your thornful nature i have taken your thornful mind thornful all curse from adam to you those thorns which god lord jesus he heavenly father when he is told in the garden of eden those thorns have been put inside the head of our lord jesus christ my dear friend somebody say amen praise god now jesus brought us crown what did he do so jesus he brought us the crown of life somebody say amen the crown of life from crown of thorns praise god So Jesus he put the crown of thorns and he has given the crown of life somebody say a man and there are the so many crowns are given at least five crowns i would like to mention here first of all crown of life revelation 2:10 fear none of those things which thou shall suffer before the devil shall cast some of you into prison that you may be tried and you shall have tribulation 10 days but faithful unto death I will give thee a crown of life somebody say amen praise god james 1:12 blessed is the man that endureth temptation for when he tried he shall receive the crown of life praise god today if you live in christ jesus who took those thorns into his head you are right to receive the crown of life Number two, crown of righteousness. Second Timothy four eight. Henceforth there is laid for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord righteous judge shall give me at the day, and not to me only, but unto all them also who love His appearing. Praise God. Second crown is crown of righteousness, and third crown of glory. First Peter five four. And when the chief shepherd Lord Jesus Christ shall appear you shall receive crown of glory that fadeth not away praise god crown of glory coming out of from the crown of thorns which have been put because these thorns touched the blood of Jesus Christ and the thorns became turned into the crowns of great crown of life crown of righteousness crown of glory and now number 4 crown of rejoicing first thessalonians 2:19 for what is our hope joy and crown of rejoicing or not even you in the presence of our lord jesus christ at his coming the crown of rejoicing and finally the crown of imperishable praise god we see here very clearly 
in 1st Corinthians chapter 9 verse 25 and every man that striveth for the majesty is uh, temperate in all things and now they do it to obtain corruptible crown but we an incorruptible crown praise God praise God the crown the Lord Jesus the crown of thorns touch the blood of Jesus he has taken the whole curse right from the Adam and Eve which are thorns put on his head and God made it that crown for you and me crown of life crown of righteousness crown of glory crown of rejoicing and crown of imperishable praise God dear friends Jesus Christ of Nazareth he received the crown now today we have to put those crown by washing of ourselves with the precious blood of Jesus Christ and the crown which we are giving when God gives such a crown of life can you make that crown is without thorns so to remove those thorns from the crown Jesus blood need to touch you and me in Jesus mighty name Amen let us bow down our heads gracious heavenly father almighty God God of heavens and Lord of lords, King of kings and Lord of lords. Praise God. Father God, Master God, thorn up the crown of thorns, Father God. You made it crown of life by touching the blood of Jesus Christ. Father God, hallelujah. Yes, Master God, all the burden, all every burden comes to the head always. All curse will come upon the head. So you took that crown of thorns, received it. For the our sake, Father God, and blood, and so that those thorns, Father God, turn it into the blessings for every one of us. Whoever washed their precious, Father God, Master God, washed their hearts with the precious blood of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy God, for this wonderful time, Lord. Thank you for the Master crown of thorns, Father God, so that we got the crown of life in every one of us, whoever washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Touch every brother and sister and child, everybody. Right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father God, that crown is the passion of every believer of Jesus Christ. The crown which you have put. Yes, Lord, you are the king of kings. You are the king of the universe. The golden master God, the Vita. Father God, wonderful golden thing of crown is upon you on a white horse in heaven. And we bow down to you, Father God. And you are calling every one of us, whoever survives and be steadfast living in the trials and temptation, live for Jesus Christ. They will receive the crown of life in heaven. Praise God. There are so many types of crowns. Father God, have mercy upon us. Bless every brother and sister and child right now. Touch them and heal them. Bless them, Father God. Master God, answer their prayers right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the master God. The thorns turns into blessings. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. May the love of our heavenly father almighty God be upon us. And our gracious Lord Jesus Christ be with us. And his crown of thorns given as a crown of life for every one of us. And the communion of the Holy Spirit be upon now and forevermore. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. And the God's people said, Amen and amen. Dear friends, crown of thorns. Jesus, he received it. Because though they mocked him as a king, but it was not a mock for us. He is our king of kings and king of the universe. King of you and me to give us eternal life with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And that is what we receive in the crown of life. So praise God for every moment of blood. Praise God for every time, every, every second, every step of crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Because everything speak for you and me. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. May God bless you all. See you in the next video. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. And the God's people said, Amen and amen. Praise God.